All right, it's time for round two with the 9800 X3D. We're gonna do some VR testing and I'm gonna try and do some uh, deep dives into some of the micro stutters I detected in my software, as well as looking at what your feedback has been in the comments section. Thank you for all the comments. It's very helpful uh, for me uh, because you guys are putting forward some theories, some ideas on what I can do to better test this processor. But first of all, we have to talk about the elephant in the room. A lot of you brought up this idea that, hey, what happens at triple 1440p testing? Where's my triple 1440p? I run triple 1440p. Where are the results? And I think there's a fundamental misunderstanding here. There's no real point in showing you that because unless you're running a 4090 or you have significantly reduced your settings, you're gonna be in a GPU bottleneck. A processor like the 9800X3D is not gonna help you if all of the compute is waiting on the graphics card. That's just a fact. And I've shown this in other benchmarks and other videos. So let's look at that right now. So from the previous video with the 9800X3D, I compared at Magello, triple 1080p, it pushed the 4080 Super to over 90% GPU busy and gained a 33% advantage over the 13700K. Increasing render resolution like at triple 1440p does very little to impact the CPU, but it crushes a graphics card. As we see here, 99% busy for the 9800X 3D, 94% busy for the 13700K. Yes, the gap has shrunk between the two processors. It's only 9%, but that's not because the 13700K gained uh, speed or FPS, it's at the same FPS essentially as what it had at triple 1080p. What's happened is that the 9800X3D has pushed the graphics card to the limit and it is bound to the 4080 Super's abilities. Pushing the resolution even harder and going for triple 4K, saturating the GPU, there is very little difference between these processors. Yes, maybe a 1% advantage to the i7. Maybe the i7's minimums are a little worse. Regardless, we're looking at a substantial GPU limit. So let's talk about a hypothetical. The RTX 5090 is just a few months away. And when it comes out, I bet you it's gonna have fantastic triple 4K performance. However, if you pair it with a 13700K, it's not going to run faster than 134 FPS in this testing scenario. That's the fact of a CPU bottleneck. It helps us identify when a graphics card will not help our FPS. All right, so the next thing to talk about are frame time spikes, or what I was calling micro stuttering. Now, I looked up the wiki page, which goes back a decade for micro stuttering, and actually references Crossfire and Sly. If you don't know what those are, you missed out on a good time. So during my testing, these stutters only appeared in the data. They didn't appear on the screen. That's why I called them a micro stutter, like a microorganism. You need a microscope to see them. Semantics aside, here's what it looked like in Automobilista 2. On the left, we have the 9800X3D and those very clear and obvious blue frame time spikes relating to how long it takes the CPU to complete the render. And then on the right is the 7800X3D and they're mostly gone. Some of you have pointed out the advantage to using the newest service pack for Windows, which was in a preview state, it's 24H2, compared to what I had done my previous testing with 23H2. And AMD has suggested through press releases and some testing that was completed by Hardware Unboxed that there is a performance advantage, not just to the 9800X3D, but also to the rest of the Ryzen lineup. For example, Hardware Unboxed showed a 11% gain with the 7700X going from 23H2 to 24H2. Single 1080p resolution, but an interesting result nonetheless. Back to my results with Automobilista 2 at triple 1080p, and here are the 24H2 results. And it kinda helped, but they're still there. And I thought, okay, I need to look at other simulators and do this comparison. I also recorded these spikes in Lamal Ultimate. Again, the comparison is very obvious to the 7800X 3D. And then when I switched over to 24H2, there seems to be no change at all in this title. And these blue frame time spikes bring down the averages. So it's important to figure this out. 
a few of you pointed out, um, maybe it's a GPU bottleneck. Maybe it's related to the 4080 Super. What happens if you decrease the texture quality and the other graphics quality? Does it change the frame time spike? So here are those results. And yeah, there seems to be an obvious decrease in the spikes that I witnessed. First here in the Lama Ultimate, I set everything to the lowest quality. Uh, the footage up top is still at medium. And when I went back to Automobilista 2, reducing the quality on the left-hand side, check it out. Those frame time spikes have decreased in size. I'm still not convinced this is related to the graphics card. I think this comment here has the best suggestion that maybe I'm looking at a fault in the tool itself that I'm using, which is CapFrameX. I know Gamers Nexus and other benchmarkers have built their own tools. I'm just one guy running this show, so I don't have the resources to do that. I don't have employees. So I'll try and work on a better solution so I can get better measurements for you, but it's going to take a bit more time. This did not stop me, however, from re-benchmarking all of these titles with the 9800X 3D using 24H2 and facing off against 23H2. So here are the two results we already saw. The Lama Ultimate showing a slight advantage to the 23H2 and then Automobilista 2, that's where we saw those significant spikes decrease with 24H2. We can see that the minimums have improved. However, the overall average is actually lower. So this is an early indication that you can't just assume it's going to run faster. So let's look at the other simulators, starting with Rensport. And here we see that same trend, an improvement in the minimums, but a slight decrease in the average. Next is iRacing, and this is actually the only good showing for 24H2 in this list. It showed a noticeable improvement in the minimums where I also witnessed some of those frame time spikes, but the average has also crept up, gaining almost 5%. When we look at a set of Corsa, again, it's in favor of 23H2 like we saw previously, and a set of Corsa Competizione, it's actually an 8% loss of performance if you upgrade to 24H2, at least in this testing that I've done. Last up is Race Room, and I saw no change in the average FPS between 23H2 and 24H2. However, there is a slight advantage, again, an improvement for the minimums with 24H2. Someone left a comment, I can't find it now, that 24H2 is now the default service pack if you were to download Windows 11 today. So this is going to be the future, whether we want it or not with our FPS. I know some benchmarkers are mix matching Windows releases to best align up with the processors. I don't know if that's practical anymore. So moving forward, I'll probably be 24H2. Speaking of other benchmarkers, why don't my results jive with them? Well, I've been testing at triple 1080p. Let's back this truck up and look at single 1080p. And here's where the story changes once again. Starting at the top, there's a 9% gain with Rensport. Then we follow that up with Lamal Ultimate, 6% gain for 24H2 over 23H2. Then there's an 11% gain with iRacing, an 8% gain with a set of Corsa. And the next is a little interesting because again, I had referenced the hardware unbox where they showed an 11% gain, but I only saw 1% gain with the 7800X 3D comparing 24H2 to 23H2. Then there is the 12% gain for Automobilista 2. That's the biggest gainer of this group. And last is Race Room, which saw a 4% gain. Notice how our GPU busy measurement has increased for all of 24H2 results, except for Race Room. So that's kind of curious. And that might explain why the triple 1080p didn't show the results that we thought we would see because it has increased the dependency on the graphics card. And I had already pushed the 4080 Super to its limits. And with that, I think we've come full circle here. Here is single 1080p, all of the simulators averaged out to show you what their performance looks like across these processors. Yes, this is only 23 H2 results. I just couldn't emotionally bring myself back around to redo all that testing. If you have a 144 Hertz monitor or faster, you're going to need a Ryzen 5600 or faster 
to achieve a high enough FPS to get that consistent frame rate. Again, we're just looking at the first lap, the most CPU intense lap of a race. In theory, the Ryzen 5600 can deliver 150 FPS at single 4K, assuming the graphics card is fast enough. So what we're looking at here is the maximum that can be achieved by the processor if we have removed our video card constraint. The same theory applies at triple 1080p. These are the maximum average frame rates that we can see from these processors, assuming your graphics card is not holding back performance. If I had an RTX 4090, I think that lead from the 9800X3D would increase over the other processors. And that is who should be interested in the 9800X3D, the enthusiast simulator racer or flight or whatever, who's looking to push their graphics card because they have one of the fastest on the market. But this AM5 platform shows really well in this chart. You could come in at a Ryzen 7600X or 7600 and have a very capable processor, almost as good as a 5800X3D. And AMD has confirmed that their next Ryzen processors are going to be on the same socket. And I think most of us are assuming the same chipsets that are available today. So if you plan to upgrade to an RTX 50 series or 60 series down the road, this AM5 platform appears to have the legs to keep that pace. So um, <laughs> the, all of these results were actually supposed to be the introduction to the VR benchmarking that I've done. I saw all the comments. It's easily the most requested thing from you guys. But uh, this topic just got a little out of hand. I, you know me, I can't stop benching once I start. So um, that's why I had to make this video and I've just kind of split it off as a separate one. And this topic does carry forward into the VR analysis because you have to play within the abilities of your graphics card. So once again, I've tuned my 4080 Super for all the CPU analysis that I have coming your way. It should be out in the next couple of days. So look forward to that analysis. Thank you again for all the feedback and thank you for watching.